Hey there, my name is Jatli Halmason, and I'm the director of the short film Charge. Now, I love movie props, and after we made the film, I really wanted to make my own real-life version of the battery in the film. I had five main goals for the design. It needs to look like the prop in the film. The glowing rods really need to look like they themselves are glowing. I didn't want any cables, so I just wanted to go for common batteries. Most of the design should just be friction fit with no rattling or anything like that. And the design should use very few components or manufacturing steps. The idea was I can then maybe make 10 of them. After a lot of trial and error, I came up with a design and I want to show you how I assembled it. Afterwards, we'll go over the goals again and see how successful the design is. My design consists of nine 3D printed parts using silver and bronze colored PLA. There's the shell, the base, the bottom core, the top core, the cap, the two contacts, and the two clamps. And here's all the additional materials I used. We got blue acrylic rods, acrylic sheets and plates, some printed stickers, green LEDs and one cyan LED, a toggle button, a converter, a resistor, AAA batteries in a holster, and some electrical wire and tape. To assemble the battery, I started by taking the bottom core, then the top core, and connected them together. Then I took the acrylic rods, I sanded them to give them a matte finish, and then inserted them into the core. I took eight green LEDs and inserted them into the core at the top. I connected the LEDs negative connections together and then the LEDs positive connections. I did the same at the bottom of the core. Then I connected the bottom negative LEDs to the top negative LEDs. And I connected the top positive LEDs to the bottom positive LEDs. Then I took the shell, the cap, applied glue to the cap and glued it to the top of the shell. Then I took the contacts, applied glue to them, and glued them to the top of the shell. Then I took a clamp, gently bent it into shape, applied glue to it, and glued it to the side of the shell. Then I did the same thing on the other side. Then I took the small transparent acrylic plate, printed four transparent decalled stickers, and fastened the stickers to the plate. I sanded the back side of the plate to give it a matte finish and inserted the plate into the slot at the bottom of the shell. Then I took one of the transparent acrylic sheets, carefully heated it with a heat gun and pressed it into a round shape. Then I inserted it into the core. I took the other sheet and did the same thing on the other side. Then I took the shell and inserted the core into it. Then I took the base and the button, applied glue to the button holder in the base and inserted the button into the button holder. Then I took the converter and inserted it into the base. Then I took the cyan LED, sanded the front of it to make the light less focused, put a bit of tape around it and inserted it into the base. Now I took the resistor and connected it to the LED. Then I connected the LED positive input to the converter positive output, connected the LED negative input to the converter negative output and connected the converter positive input to the button. Then I took the battery holster, connected the converter negative input to the battery holster negative output and connected the button to the battery positive output. Then I took the shell, connected the converter negative output to the LED negative connection and connected the converter positive output to the LED positive connection. Then I took the battery holster and inserted it into the base. I took the three AAA batteries and inserted them into the battery holster. Finally, I took the shell and the base, pressed the base on both sides to bend the prongs slightly inwards and then inserted and locked the base into the shell. Here's a comparison of the battery from the film versus my design. And here is the final result. This is the first time I ever worked on a product design, 3D printing and electronics, which is evident in the end result. It's full of design compromises and the electronics could easily be improved upon. So let's review my original goals for this project and where I ended up. I had to embrace the 3D printing artifacts from our old printer, but the bronze colored material uh, is a bit off. Also, I had to add a seam in order to access the base. So I'll give this an 80%. With 16 LEDs pointed at the rods, it it really looks like they themselves are glowing, but I may have gone too far because they do cause some light bleeding. So I'll give it a 90%. It was a challenge, but I managed to fit three AAA batteries into that tiny space with a lot of compromises. However, they ended up being so short lived that I really need to subtract that as a penalty. So I'll give it a 50%. The core, the rods, the LEDs, the displays, battery holster, converter, and the acrylic sheets are all snug friction fit. Only a few parts need to be glued on. And when you shake it hard, there is zero rattling, 100%. I made a lot of sacrifices in the design for this goal, but the end result still feels a bit convoluted in the amount of steps and special materials required. So eh, 60%. So final score, 76%. Uh, not great, not terrible. If you leave it turned on within 40 minutes, you'll notice the LEDs have already dimmed down. And within an hour and a half, the AAA batteries are almost completely depleted. It's only really meant to be turned on for a minute to admire the glow, and then you should turn it off. 
If I had to redesign it, I would allow it to use a more expensive and compact rechargeable battery. Then I design a discrete socket where you can plug a cable to recharge the battery. That way you can also just leave it turned on while plugged to a USB power source, for example. Now I never done anything like this before. So of course there's plenty of lessons learned. If you're interested in looking at my design files, they are shared on studio.blender.org. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, if you're considering creating your own version of this prop or tinkering with electronics in general, please follow all the necessary safety procedures and be careful. Electronics can be very dangerous if you don't understand what you're doing. I do hope this brief overview of my design experiment at least gave you some inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.